Okay, welcome back, everybody. So our next session is about perspectives from the global south. So when Anik called me and asked me to moderate this session, I have to admit I had to look up what global south means. Um, interestingly, I live above the equator, but I am part of the global south. Our speakers here, Fabienne Borges from Brazil and Davis Cook, who could not be here in person because uh, of visa issues. He happens to be in South Africa. So, well, that's south enough. And Australia, which is way down under, is part of the global north. So having said that, I think the perspective today here is, I mean, the, the, the session is really about perspectives rather than the geopolitics of language. Because geopolitics of language, I think we'll keep it for another session. But I just wanted to let you know that I'd heard about the term, but it was quite interesting to see how they define this. Personally, I've uh, been in the world of space uh, in a very multidisciplinary sense. I'm an industrial designer an engineer, and an aerospace architect. I worked with NASA and Boeing in the late 90s. I've, spe I've spent about 20 years being an entrepreneur, having founded three little companies, one in San Francisco, one in Vienna, one in Bangalore. So I think, to me, what will be interesting to see what Fabian and Davis will share with us today um, I mean, having worked with the Americans, the Europeans, the Japanese, the Russians, and having grown up with the Indian Space Program myself, I think it's often the perspective, it's often about cultures to me than about geographies. And I'm really curious to see uh, how our two speakers today bring that aspect to our session. So Fabian here is a clinical psychologist and a researcher, curator, and an essayist. And um, Fabian, I think what I'll do is I'll have you introduce your trajectory in the world of sort of space as a subculture and art and techno science, and then dive into your presentation. Hello, um, I'm Fabiane Borges from uh, south of Brazil, uh, Bagé, frontier with Uruguay. But I live in São José dos Campos, close to INPE, National Institute for Space Research, and Ubatuba, the beautiful Atlantic forest beach place. So I want to introduce uh, a little bit of a, a brief cartography, autocartography profile. Um, so I will start, I will read because. I'm sure you're gonna understand better if I just talk. <laughs> okay, so let's start like this. Um, I am part of an um, archive, Statical Archives. It's a feminist group that uh, are building a kind of map of a free software movement in the history of internet in Brazil. I brought this photo, it's not uh, all, no, it's not all map, it's a part of map, just for you understand uh, more or less the localization of uh, uh, where I started uh, to work with art and space science, and I started a lot in free software movement. So, Rob Lafrenais knows a little bit the scene in Brazil of free software. It was really important because uh, in, 2000, in 2003, when Lula uh, um, was president, we had a chance to put all our free software ideas into the government. And it was an explosion of... Um, of um, public uh, politics and uh, process uh, that I hope we can live again in the next year if Lula got president again in 2022. But we are not sure. So this is the start. And uh, one of the groups I participate is um, Movement Sem Satellite, uh, Satellite Less Movement. 
Um, yeah, and then I, I will read because if not, I lose the time. So, uh, I'm a psychologist since 1998. I have a bachelor's, master, and doctorate in clinical psychology. I have worked in the frontier of clinic and art for at least 23 years. But art and space science just began during the PhD in 2011. So t it is still a bit new for me. I ask permission to share this process. How did I find the poetics of the space science? I will start with the enchantment. It was in Orbitando Satellites. It was in Orbitando Satellites, held in May 2011 in Gijón, Asturias, Spain, that I definitely fell in love with this field of space art and culture. The event took place at Plataforma Cero, Laboral Centro de Arte e Criação Industrial, on the occasion of a hackerism meeting called Summer Lab. Pedro Soler, curator of the two meetings, which happened in sequence, called me for an artistic residence at Laboral, where I could see the exhibition. I was delighted with it and had an abrupt perceptual perceptual change about the poetics of satellites, understanding them as a living, extensive, and progressive organism. Since that, Joanna Griffin's work allowed me to see. She impressed me a lot due to her delicacy and mythical thinking. Despite bring, uh, being part of many art and technology networks, including the satelliteless movement, at the time of orbiting satellites, I had not uh, yet awakened to the artistic, mythical, ancestral aspect of the world thing. I was more involved with the ethical and political issues. Although I understood the poetry of the satelliteless movement fellows, I hadn't had the chance to see that many space art works together with such sensitive and memorable footprint. This interfered, this interfered directly in the continuation of my PhD thesis before the orbiting satellites exhibition I was researching another subject, autonomy network in cyberspace at Goldsmith University of London in 2011. And when I come back from Summer Lab to London, I started to look more for satellites, hack labs, and artistic places that articulate space art projects with the DI culture. I ended up changing my research topic to specific questions related to the story of the space race, space geopolitics, astropolitics, astropolitics, space autonomy projects, and artistic projects in this area. The final thesis was entitled In Search of Space Culture, 2013. So, after the third international of the satelliteless movement, Pedro Soler and I were able to approve the exhibition project Art in Orbit, Art in Orbit, in the Contemporary Arts Center of Quito, Equator. The exhibition ran from March to June 2015, and by all account accounts, was the largest space culture exhibition in South America at the time of this writing, 2022. It was the first time I was acting as a curator in art, in art and technology. I was able to bring works by several people who were part of my doctoral thesis, um, my doctoral research. Okay. Um, and I was pleased to work with Pedro Soler, an, an expert in the arts technology field from whom I learned a lot about these subjects, these topics. Art in Orbital was a great exhibition about 30 groups and artists from various countries in South America, but also from Africa, Asia, Europe, and the Middle East participate in it, with state, civil, and artistic space agencies bring the discussions on space exploration from ancestral to contemporary. We made a journey 
through the exhibition that was divided into three correlated elements, listening, agencies, and launching. We paid attention to fictional utopian and dystopian questions about the space dream, but we also brought, we also brought projects of rupture with space colonialism, raising questions related to the Anthropocene, the end of mineral recourse, resources, the extinction of biodiversity, questions of gender, race, and class identity, as well as questioning space policies and law, the dominance of large corporations in the most privilege, privileged orbits, giving priority and visibility to some smaller, smaller initiatives, but with alternative proposals. What would a post-colonial space thinking mean from a third world perspective? After the amazing Art in Orbit, so here is just some images of the exhibition. Yeah, it was a huge exhibition. After the amazing Art in Orbit, I invited Paulo Scamparini, artist and teacher in, at Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, where I was doing my first post-PhD to organize, because I, I did like five, and I'm doing the six now. So I'm a PhD, <laughs> PhD mental. <laughs> uh, after the amazing Art in Orbit, I invite Paulo Scamparini, blah, 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 where I was doing my post-PhD to organize a little festival. Uh, of space art with me. Intergalactic Commune 1 happened in November 2017. Uh, in the call, we referred to Earthlings because it was an open call. So Earthlings, psychonauts, zombies, spies, nerds of all kinds, ontologists, metaphysicians, magicians, cyborgs, astronomers, artists, rural and urban indigenous people, techno shamans, fictionists, aliens, stun gaz gazers, and time travelers for an intergalactic meeting at Valongo Observatory. So we created a space for knowledge exchange where we provoke further, conversa further conversations through a radio program, the presentation of projects, opinions on poignant themes Themes, themes, themes uh, concerning the current stage of space colonization and the conditions of third world research. There was a predisposition of astronomers in the debates because the meeting was not characterized in the format of research presentation, but in the presentation of themes where researchers spoke about the subject through their experience in the area ranging from the history of constellations to archaeoastronomy uh, or from Mars occupation projects to the solar Anthropocene, the artistic works and scientific works were made from the interaction or reaction to the themes. Themes, um, Eduardo, é temas? Temas. Themes. Themes. OK, themes. Uh, <laughs> um, so, um, reaction to the themes of the meeting, art and astronomy in its vast production. We had a lot of noise, electronic music, projections, videos, indigenous storytelling, uh, installation, performances, um, live experimentation, jam sessions, drumming, some observation, antenna building, among other presentations. Um, Subjects of astronomical amplitude distributed in a non-linear or hierarchical way whose themes are treated as clusters of constellations where scientists, poets, artists, philosophers orbit around themes, themes that allow exchange between their densities, gravity, and worldviews in an old observatory with such special architecture 
which allow, uh, allows a, panoram a panoramic view of Rio de Janeiro, placed us in front of a subjective condition that we often do not access even in the psychological immersion of the individual or group clinic. The conditions of terrestrial in terrestrials inhabitants of planet Earth. This planetary dimension is not easily accessed, even by the daily exercise of astrophysics, which often focuses on minute issues and misses the, the perception of cosmic grandiloquence. The fact that we were with indigenous people, spending the night observing stars with telescope, performing rituals and bringing the most transversal discussions between science and imagination, put us in this special place of attention. It is this point that I consider important to reach in the proposition of these events between art and science the poetic and the imaginary dimension from a set of sophisticated structures of techno-scientific instrumentation. No, but he read all the text today, it was 18 minutes. Are you sure? So what do I do? I have more five minutes, no, 10. 10 minutes? No, I don't have it. So I will stop to read and just show images for you. Um, this is MAST, is the other, other observatory, is like Museum of Art and Astronomy. We did the other encounter with this, uh, science and uh, space science and art. Uh, the name was Ancestor Futurism, uh, is inside of a hyperorganic eight from nano groups in UFRJ as well, like Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. So, oh, Joanna Griffin, I, I could brought, because she inspired me a lot, so I, I brought her to Brazil. Um, so this is some uh, photos of the event. Here is the, in the Museum of Tomorrow. Uh, okay, I'm going so fast. So we did the, inter, uh, the Intergalactic Commune 2, was in Planetarium of Ibirapuera, São Paulo, this is in 2018. So Intergalactic Commune was, uh, I think, was until now the biggest scene uh, of space art uh, in Brazil. This is the, um, the full dome. Uh, we did an open call, so many artists from Everywhere, uh, here is the, uh, the conferences. Um, you see, we have uh, like this, this second guy, he is one of the leaders, the leaders of Quilombo Society in um, Alcantara, who is, where is our lunch space center. And here are some more people, philosophers, scientists, a more full dom, with really critic, um, uh, issues, so I cannot explain everything, but you can see. This is a machine of um, fiction, sci-fi. Uh, sci it's a lot of a piece of, um, of sci-fi, sci and you can change the movie in the, in the machine. It's a work with Rafael Frazão. So Nahum was there. Uh, we brought Mahum, Nahum to the second intergalactic commune. And yes, how you can see was a very intensive, interesting 10 days of festival, a really immersive one. So after that, we, I, I start to, to operate more with um, the program, uh, uh, National Institute for Space Research, because I was trying to, to go further and we need the laboratories to go further. So after, uh, this is INPE, for who doesn't know, it's inside the, uh, the institute. And I was there trying, uh, the, in the institute in São José dos Campos is the, the biggest one, but we have a certain places more. So here's inside of LIT, laboratory test and integration. Uh, it's the, um, Yes, uh, it's a, a huge uh, laboratory of tests and creation of satellites. 
And here is the first time I was presenting my project of space art for Impe. Uh, Wagner Garcia is there. Uh, he, he used to make some um, collaborations with scientists as well. So we created an uh, artistic residence at Impe. So here we have the three first residences. Karina Carinho was the first one. She is engineer and artist, and she created nanosatellites. Um, Afro-futurist satellite, the name is uh, Orisat, and it is not launched yet, but she is doing a bit of um, success in the middle of uh, contemporary art. So I hope some um, galleries just pay uh, the satellite for her. So, because, uh, pay the satellite, no, pay the launch of the satellite, because the satellite is almost ready. So here is, is, is Peter Roche, who did a uh, music with the Cyber 044A. It's a China-Brazil um, resource satellites. Um, re, um, the satellite of China-Brazil is uh, about um, Amazon, yeah, and the um, pollution of atmosphere. And the third one was Zander Porter. He was dancing and making some um, choreographies inside of the anechoic camera. So we created this workshop of art sats to uh, teach how to construct the art sats. So it was during the pandemic, a lot of people were. Eduardo Ka gave um, one of the conferences. Uh, like uh, many other people. And here is our four art sats uh, from the first uh, workshop of art sat. We had three teams uh, that uh, made, so era two sat is one of them. It, wo it works with a rubbish um, space um, junk, space junk. So here are our first um, Album of music from just Latin America artists. Um, here you can see the design of uh, Lino Divas. So, Cube Design is uh, like a competition of nanosatellites, and I have to go fa fast. So, here is more or less how Cube Design works. This is the teams. So, the first place, second place, third place. Um, is if your your satellites um, go through all tests and um, uh? yeah so this one is orbital temple is the first um, uh, the book of life was the, his first its first name and it got the we they uh, they were our students in workshop of artsat and after they 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 compete in the cube design and got the first stage. So they will send this nanosatellite this um, now in October, it will be the first satellite, nanosatellite of uh, um, Brazil for sure. And we are asking if he is not uh, from. Huh? No, finish. It's OK. Claire, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I have the difficult job of time monitoring. I'm sorry. But I think I think what I find fabulous about, you know, the I personally am I'm biased. I love presentations by non-native speakers because I think the life that they bring into their presentations is not something they take for given. I really, really, and I think the fact that you call some of your projects intergalactic. And the brief that you read out is far more diverse than many of these programs I've seen in the United States and other places which talk about diversity and inclusivity. And I think bringing in the indigenous uh, angle to exploration, bringing in you know, musicians and artists, and I, I, think, I think it was as diverse as things can get in the space world. Um, maybe during our discussion, we'll talk a little bit about how do you go about getting support for these kind of uh, interventions, whether it is within the space agency, outside of it, in, you know, in Ecuador, in, in Brazil? We'll come to that. 